Hi there and welcome to our penultimate lesson in our P6 topic where we're going to be looking today at transformers in the electricity for gadget section. Now, uh, we're going to be looking at transformers that are used to change the voltage and current within electrical systems. Now they're used on a very big scale in terms of uh, the national grid and transferring electricity around the country and on a smaller scale, so from taking uh, electricity from your plug um, and changing the voltage and current as it goes into your device. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you at the end of the lesson. So here are our objectives for today's lesson on transformers. So by the end of this lesson you should know and understand how electromagnetic induction can be used in a transformer to change the voltage and current within an electrical system. Okay, so let's have a look at some transformers. Now, transformers start with a coil of wire surrounded by a magnet. Now, once we turn that on, we will create a magnetic field around the coil and the uh, magnet. Now then, if we have another coil uh, close by, because we've got the magnetic field, which we can see here, what that will do is that will induce a current into the opposing coil. So it will create a coil, a current in the second coil. Now, if the first coil is switched on and off, it will produce an alternating current in the second coil. So if we go on, off, on, off, we will get a uh, alternating current. Now, to make it stronger, we can add in a permanent magnet. Now, this is what we use for transformers. Now, we've got a transformer here, so you can see around the, um, around the outside we've got this iron core magnet. Now here, we've got our coil of wires, which we've got 50 coils, and we have an input here of 20 volts, uh, sorry, 10 volts. Now, if we look at the relationship here between the number of coils going in, and the number of coils going out, we have an increase, and it's four times the amount. So 50 going up to 200 is four times. Now that means that the voltage will also increase by four times. Now this is what we call a step-up transformer. Now if we reverse that, where we've got our 200 coils going down to 50 coils, so the 50 coils is four times less, sorry, it's um, a factor of four below, or a fourth, a quarter, then the voltage will also reduce by a quarter. Now, to get some understanding as to why that happens, it means that as the voltage either goes up or down, the current will do the reverse. So when the voltage goes down, the current goes up, and when the current goes up, the voltage will go down. So why do we use transformers? Now, they're not 100% efficient, although they are supposed to be. Um, so the power in will equal the power out, or it should do, providing there is no heat loss. So the power in equals the power out. Now, to calculate power, you can use the voltage times the current. So V in, sorry, I in times V in will equal I out times V out which means you can actually work out uh, any of the factors. So a transformer, a step-up transformer will have a low voltage and a high current, and it will step up to a high voltage and a low current. And then a step down will do the reverse, so a high voltage and a low current to a low voltage and a high current. Now, the number of coils... Uh, and the voltage can be worked out using this formula here. So the voltage divided by the, uh, sorry, the voltage on the primary coil, the first coil, divided by the voltage on the secondary coil, can equal the number of turns or the number of coils in the first coil divided by the number of coils in the secondary. Okay, so let's have a look at how this actually works with an example. So a laptop runs on 12 volts, 
it's plugged into the mains at 230 volts. So the transformer is needed. That's the little box that you plug into your laptop through the, through the cables. If there are 960 turns on the primary coil, how many will there be on the secondary? So we've got our primary voltage and our secondary voltage equals our number of turns on the primary and secondary coil. So we're going to rearrange that equation to find out the number of turns on the secondary coil. So we do Vs, so the voltage on the secondary coil, times the number of turns on the primary coil, divided by the voltage on the primary coil. And that should give us 12 times 960 divided by misprint there, 230, which should equal 50 coils. Where are step-up transformers used? Now, they're mainly used in the uh, national grid where you generate electricity in the power station. You go to the step-up transformer, which uh, increases the voltage from around about 10,000 volts up to around about 100,000 volts. And then from the national grid, you go to a step-down transformer, which takes that 100,000 volts and steps it down to the 230 that we get in our home. Now, isolating transformers, they have equal number of coils on each side, so there's no change in the voltage with a step up or a step down. Now, this means that you have two halves of the circuit and they are kept separate. This reduces the risk of live parts or the mains touching an earth lead and therefore affecting the body of the, the actual device. OK, so we've had a look at the uh, calculations to do with transformers, but let's actually have a look at a transformer in action. Um, we're going to have a look at a, a video clip I made millions and millions of years ago that shows how a transformer is, is used. We're going to look at how uh, transformers are used in the national grid. Now, here we've got a power station which uses the generators to generate electricity. Now that will send a relatively low uh, voltage, sorry, relatively low current um, out to the step-up transformer. Now the step-up transformer will then increase the voltage so you have a very, very high voltage and therefore a low current. Now the low current is needed because then you have the uh, less energy wasted as heat. So you can see that we've gone from about 3 volts up to uh, 200 volts here. Now from the step up transformer we go via the wires um, up to the cables in the electricity pylons which we'll be able to, to see here in, in the model. So we go up to the wires that are take the electricity around the whole entire country through the pylon. So that's what you can see when you are out and about looking in, in fields. Now we then get to the end and again you can see we've still got the 200 volts. So we've still got that high voltage and low current. Now, when we get to the end of the electricity, we go again to another transformer. And this time it's a step down transformer. So we go from that low voltage, sorry, high voltage to a very low voltage. And this is the, you can see here, we've got 2.7, 2.8 volts here, which is then able to go into our homes. And we can therefore power that light bulb. Now, if we were to use the high voltage, that light bulb would not be able to shine. It would uh, cause the light bulb to, to stop working. OK, so to conclude what we have looked at today, uh, we have looked at how voltage and current uh, change. Uh, so we've looked at how a step-up transformer will increase the voltage but decrease the current and how a step-down transformer will do the opposite. It will reduce the voltage and increase the current, which is why we have very low currents running through the national grid to save on wasted 
uh, wasted energy as energy being lost as heat and why we have higher currents in our electrical systems in homes and schools and factories. Um, we've looked at how the electromagnetic induction actually causes that and how we have the, the same transfer of power. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next time for our final lesson in our P6 topic. Bye-bye.